The following program has been generously funded by the Patterson Foundation. friends, welcome to another episode of This Book is Cool. My name is Beth Duda, and I'm the director of the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading. And today, we have a wonderful book to share with you. It's called The Art Lesson, and it was written by Tommy D. Paola. It also was illustrated by Tommy D. Paola. Today we have a special guest with us, someone who knows a lot about art and art lessons because she's an art teacher. Not only is she an art teacher, but she is the teacher of the year for Sarasota County Schools. Her name is Heather Young. Hi, how are you? Terrific, Heather, how are you? I'm awesome, thank you for having me. Thank you for agreeing to be on This Book is Cool. We have a great book to talk about today. We do, can, one of my favorites. Can you tell me why you think this book is cool? Well, first of all, I love the author. He's not just the author, but he's also the illustrator, which I just think is amazing. And I've always loved his stories. But what I really liked learning was that the, the character Tommy in this book um, his friends had different favorite things to do. And I know that we all have unique interests and hobbies and things that we love to do. And I'm just wondering what's your favorite thing to do or what's our reader's favorite thing to do? Wow, that's a very good question. I love to make things. So sometimes I like to make things that might be considered art, like paintings or drawings, but sometimes I like to make things with um, needles, like knitting or crocheting. And I also enjoy making food, so cooking. How about you? What's your favorite thing? Oh, you know, I love reading and I also love to create things. Um, I am learning watercolors right now, so I love painting, but like you, I love to do things with needles, but I enjoy needlepoint and cross stitch. So um, I also have um, a daughter and a dog and a husband, and we like to go on the boat together. So those are some things that we like to do. Well, I think you're right. Everybody has different things that they like to do. One of the things that was so interesting about this book is that he seemed to know at a very young age the things that he liked to do. Right. And I love that his family encouraged him. From before he even started school, they saw that he loved to draw and he got those special, um, those special art materials. And his family encouraged him by putting his drawings up everywhere, um, at the places where they work and at their homes. And I just thought it was so great that they saw that love that he had really young and they encouraged him instead of discouraging him. I really enjoyed that his family saw his love and bought him crayons, he bought them a box of 64 crayons with all the right. different colors. And that's actually one of the things that I always enjoy having is a box of 64 crayons. I love all the different choices of color. They even make boxes of 124 now, so yes. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I, 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 crazy. I, I, might have to, I might have to go see. Now, um, Tommy, in our book, the main character, he knew very young that he wanted to be an artist. So I have a question for you about that. Mm -hmm. Did you always know that you wanted to be a teacher? And did you always know you wanted to be an art teacher? That's a great question. My mom was a teacher. And so from a very young age, I was always in her classroom. And I played school in our garage from the time I had a younger sister. And so I made her play with me and her friends. And actually, I never thought to be a teacher. Um, I actually wanted to be a doctor and an interior decorator when I was really young. 
Um, and then I actually got to college and I actually was studying um, biology to be a, a, a doctor and realized, you know what, I just want to teach kids. And so I never actually was trained in art, even though I always loved art. Um, and so actually, I just became an art teacher this past year. I taught mostly first and second and third grades for my whole 23 years. And so teaching art was something I kind of discovered as an adult, but it's, I just love it. Sometimes when we're little, we think, oh, that's the thing I want to do when I grow up. But if you stay interested and you keep learning about things and become a lifelong learner, you can recreate yourself all the time. I think that's the most important thing. I know that sometimes kids think teachers and adults know everything. And you know what? I am learning something new every day. My students teach me something new every day because I don't have, um, I never went to art school. I am constantly having to create art on my own and teach myself and thank goodness for the internet and all the things that I've learned. But I learn so much from my students every day. It's so we never stop learning. <laughs> I think it's exciting to learn things all the time. And Absolutely. one of the gifts that reading gives us is the ability to learn things that we never even dreamed of before. Carefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his house. This book, I know, is autobiographical. Can you help us understand what that very long word means? Autobiographical means that the author is writing about himself. So this is actually a true story. Um, and and I, what I love about this author is that this is not his only book that he's written. He mentions the two nanas in this book, and he actually dedicates an entire book to those sweet ladies. Um, so autobiographical is when you actually write a story um, and in his case, illustrating, drew the pictures of the story about himself. So it's actually a true story, which is really neat. His style of drawing stays very much the same in all of his books. So just by looking at the book cover, you know that it was created by him. He's got a very unique style that's very beautiful and it's a, a wonderful and warm way he has of telling stories. And in this book, Tommy, had an idea of the kind of art that he wanted to create, and the art teacher had assignments of the kind of art that she wanted to create. And they were able to come together to have a, a compromise. How, how does that work in your art classrooms? Do, do the children create what they want to do, or do they create what you want them to do? How does that work? I'm a little different than maybe Tommy's first grade teacher, but a lot like his art teacher. Um, so we definitely have assignments. There's definitely time when they can free draw or do free art, but they definitely have assignments that they have to do. But within those assignments, there's always room for creativity. And I'm con kids are constantly asking, can I paint the bird this color? Can I do this? And my um, response is that you don't have to ask my permission to be creative. So I definitely encourage creativity. But if we're all painting a dog, you have to paint the dog. It may not, it may be a purple dog or it may be a dog with pink polka dots. But, you know, so as long as you're following my general outline, I absolutely encourage, encourage, encourage creativity. So um, I would never tell someone that they had to paint something or draw something this certain way. But there are certain requirements that you have to meet. But I love that Tommy uh, was able to make that compromise. They were able to work together to come up with a solution that made both uh, the teacher and Tommy happy. I think and that's what we have to do in life. It's a great part of the book, for, absolutely. So it, our time is running out. Is there anything special that you want to share um, with the students before we go? I just want to say, you know, keep reading and keep learning. Um, there's nothing you can't learn from a great book. There's nowhere you can't go with a great story. And I think especially now that we're at home a little bit more, it's just a great time to learn something new, read something new. You've definitely got the time to do it and just, just never quit learning and reading. Wonderful. Well, Heather, thank you for spending time with thank us you. today. It was great to see you. Great to get to know you, you a little bit more. Me, and I'm glad we got to share this amazing story. It's awesome. Me too. Bye. Bye, All right. Bye everybody.
It was fun to hear from Heather Young how things work in her arts classroom. I would love to be a student of hers. I love that she allows for creativity and yet has assignments where you can learn real skills and learn how to do things better. In this book, The Art Lesson, Tommy DiPiola learns things from his art teacher, but he also has a love of drawing from the time he's a very young boy, and he draws pictures. And one of the things we learn in the book is that he continued to draw pictures for his whole life. It was something he loved when he was young, and he loved it all the way through his life. We have some words from this book for our word bank. The first word is the word collected. Collected. Collected means to gather little by little. Collected. Is there anything that you collect? Our next word is the word unfinished. Unfinished. That word unfinished means not done yet. Unfinished. Our next word is the word wrinkly. Wrinkly. Something that's wrinkly has a lot of lines or folds. So if you have a piece of paper that you've crumpled up and then you try to smooth it out, it still is wrinkly. Our next word is the word smock. Smock. A smock is a loose dress or a blouse or a big shirt that you wear over your clothes to protect them while you're painting or working with clay or any other kind of uh, activity that's very, very messy, it's good to have a smock. Our next word is the word property. Property. Property is a thing or things that belong to someone. So my box of 64 crayons is my property. Monitor. Monitor, the way it's used in this book, means to keep track of something or someone. To monitor them means to watch their activities. But that word monitor can be used other ways also. If you have a computer, you might have a monitor that you can see things on. So the word monitor has more than one meaning. We have a fun activity that goes along with the book, The Art Lesson. Can you guess what it is? You're right, it's to make some art. We have an example here of some autobiographical art. So, this is autobiographical art because it features an activity that the artist likes to do. So this artist likes to play basketball and you can see that they've drawn the basketball court and they've also put the scoreboard up here and they put a little joke in this or maybe it's more of a dream because this side the score is 10 but on this side the score is 57. So the person who's throwing the basketball has to make up for an awful lot of baskets they haven't made yet. We would love for you to create a piece of autobiographical art and send it to us at connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. That's connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. I can't wait to see what you might send to us. Maybe you could draw a picture of you cooking, or draw a picture of you playing your favorite sport, or draw a picture of you drawing. That's one of my favorite pictures here in this book. Look, it's a picture of the artist drawing. Thank you for being with us today. We love sharing all of these books with you. And soon we'll have another episode of another book that we think is really cool. 
Now, between now and then, I hope you keep reading. Remember what Heather Young said about how important reading is so that we can be lifelong learners. Reading is the key to succeeding. Bye. See you soon. <laughs>